morning children welcome back to sbr online classes myself kumla patil handling sixth standard science so yesterday we were studying about body movements chapter a and uh, we have finished the uh, movement body movements uh, human body movements and all and we have also started the movements in animals so so we will continue with the uh, yesterday's uh, wherever we have stopped so we had stopped right now and animals this diet of animals is nothing but the movement in animals how the movement is there in different animals we have studied yesterday and what are the parts how they are modified for walking i mean walking or creeping crawling whatever it is okay yesterday we have studied about two animals that is first we have studied about earthworm just a recap earthworm how are its body parts how it is uh, why it is suitable for movement in the soil so what is earthworm it is found in the soil and uh, how it is body part is made up of it is not having any bones it is made up of rings of muscles from end to end from head to tail so it is suitable for moving very swiftly into the soil and what you have studied yesterday about uh, earthworm is how it moves okay now uh, the movement of the earthworm is like that the rear end fixes to the ground and the head part it extends and it shortens its body and then it moves again the head part fixes to the ground again the rear end releases and then it moves so it moves in short distances and the movement of earthworm is by making the relaxation and contraction of the body understood so like this the earthworm moves from place to place and how it fixes to the ground what is that structure which makes it to have a good grip in the soil on the soil so it is having as a said instead of bristles so what are they bristles what are these bristles they are nothing but hair like structures which will uh, hold the soil or whatever on the surface and it will have a good grip on the soil so this hair like structures called bristles will uh, make the earthworm to fix firmly to the soil understood so these are uh, the characteristics of the earthworm how it moves swiftly into the soil and it even secretes i said slimy substance which will make it moist and it will make the movement easy for the earthworm and it uh, removes all the undigested thing whenever it eats things inside the soil and removes the undigested and that makes the soil fertile and it is very useful for the farmer that's why earthworm is called farmer's friend it loosens the soil it makes the soil fertile and uh, it is it also helps in the making the soil fertile and good for farming and next we have studied about snail so what is snail say snail is also found in some gardens i said yesterday uh, it is a animal which is having a rounded structure on its body and so it is having a rounded structure on its body and it encloses the head and tail and when it moves the head the thick head comes out of the small opening from the shell what is the uh, rounded uh, structure that is called a shell this one single unit so shell is nothing but a one whole single unit which encloses the head of the snail and it comes out through a small opening from the shell whenever it wants to move and the movement is very slow and so movement is very slow and this is just like a protection for the snail it is it does not help in the movement it is taken along when the animal is moving it is carried along with the animal and when it doesn't want it it puts its head inside the shell and when it comes out through the opening it starts moving and how is the uh, food food when you just look uh, beneath the snail you see the structures of movement there what are the structures there food so food is made up of very strong muscle and it has a wavy motion so when you see when you just see the uh, snail from below the foot is having very strong muscles and the movement is like wavy motion understood so these are the, some of the characteristics of earthworm and snail we have studied yesterday and the movement is very slow in the snail now today we will see about the next animal that is cockroach i think all must have seen cockroach isn't it so next is about cockroach so cockroaches 
they uh, jump, they walk, they climb, and even they fly. Sorry, yes, it's not jumping. They fly, they walk, and they climb. So all the three things it will do. So how how does it do? What are the parts with which it walks, it flies, and even it climbs sometimes, isn't it? So there are three pairs of legs. Three pairs of legs which are used for walking. And if you are having the next deep instrument, you can see the cockroach in figure eight point two zero. You can see that figure there. Okay. Now there are three pairs of legs which are used for walking, and then the body is covered. Next, we'll go for the body parts. Body is covered with the very hard outer skeleton. So, what is the body? Body is covered with the outer hard skeleton. And this skeleton is made up of thin plates. They are made up of plates which are joined together. They are made up of plates. They are joined together, and they are, and which they will help in the movement. So, what are the, just we see the two points of cockroach. There are three pairs of legs which will help it in walking, and the body is made up of outer hard skeleton, and this hard skeleton is made up of plates which are arranged. Which are connected, which are joined together, and that will help in the movement. And this place will help in the movement. Okay. Now next, there are two pairs of wings. Next, we see two pairs of wings which are attached to the body. Two pairs of wings which are attached to the body behind the head. Okay. So these wings are for flying. So these two pairs of wings will help will help in flying. Where they are attached, they are attached to the body behind the head. So they will help it fly. Okay. Now next we will see about uh, the muscles. So next about the muscles in the cockroach. Where are the muscles attached? They are attached. So some muscles are attached near the legs, and these muscles will make the legs to move for walking. So these muscles are attached to the legs, and these Muscles will make the legs to move. Muscles are needed for yesterday. We have talked about the muscles, and these muscles will make the bones to move, isn't it? So these muscles will make the legs of the cockroach to move, and it will help it walking. And the body muscles, and the muscles are there. They are called as body muscles, and these muscles will help the cockroach in making the cockroach to fly. Understood? They are used. They will make the wings. They will make the wings, wings to move for flying. So these things you have to understand, which I have written it in points, so that it will be easy for you to understand. So we will see from first cockroach. The movement in cockroach it has three pairs of legs, which are used for walking. Understood? And then body, body is made up of an outer hard skeleton. Which are which is made up of plates. This outer skeleton is made up of plates, which are arranged together, which helps in the movement. And then it has two pairs of wings, which is used for flying. And then about muscles. Muscles are attached to the legs, and these will these uh, muscles will make the legs to move for walking. Understood? So this is for walking. And the next body muscles. Will makes the wings to move, which is used for flying. Okay, this is used for the wings for flying. So this is about cockroach. The next animal is about birds. So how the birds fly or how the birds walk? Some okay, that we will study in this topic. Birds. So some birds fly, some birds walk, fly in the air. Some birds walk on the ground. Some birds swim, like ducks, isn't it? So these are three movements which the birds uh, do for themselves. Okay. Now, how? What is the reason for flying? Okay, flying is due to the lightness in the body of the birds. So because of that lightness, only birds can fly. They are suited for flying. Understood? If the if the body of the bird is very heavy, how it can fly? So, what is the reason for flying? The reason for flying is due to the lightness of the body. 
which will which is well suited for the birds to fly in the air understood so birds some fly some walk and some swim so these are some of the movements understood these are the movements now what it makes what is that it will make it to fly what it makes what are the parts which will make it to walk and what are the parts which will make it to swim this we are going to study now now i said what is the thing which makes to fly is because of the lightness of the body lightness of the body which will make it to fly and what how it is light the bones of the birds are hollow and light so bones are there inside the birds so how should the bones be the bones should be hollow and it should be light so how are the bones bones are light and hollow and this will help the birds to make itself light and that lightness will make the birds to fly okay now next how what are the parts which will make it to fly now the bones of the hind limbs bones of the hind limbs of the birds which will now we see about the bones bones of hind limb they are uh, suited uh, they are suited for walking and perching so they are useful for walking and perching they are modified for walking and they will perch it will help the bird to move from one place to another and even to perch okay the next four limbs this is about hind limbs now next we see about four limbs they are modified for they are modified into wings so hind limbs for walking and perching and the four limbs are modified into wings they are turned into wings so that they will be able to fly in the air okay now next shoulder bones these also have shoulder bones shoulder bones are very we all have shoulder bones is it right even the birds also have shoulder bones which are very strong they have a strong shoulder bones and the next breast bones these breast bones are also modified to hold what are they uh, what what is the work of the breast bones they are modified to hold the muscles of flight they are modified to hold the muscles of height muscles of flight it makes them to hold okay and which is and which will make the wings to fly up and down wings up and down okay once again i will tell you from the first this is about birds and birds fly due to the lightness in the body what how is the lightness caused it is due to the bones which are light and which are hollow okay now birds fly birds walk birds swim because of lightness and how is the lightness because of the bones which are which are very light and which are very hollow empty hollow next bones of the birds of the hind limbs how they are they are used for walking and perching all are, they have modified here so that it makes the birds to fly and walk okay now four limbs how are the four limbs in the birds they are modified into wings they have to fly isn't it so we have four limbs so we we will use for many things so four limbs are modified in birds into wings which is where it will help the birds to fly and the next shoulder bones these shoulder bones are also very strong and these next comes the breast bones and these breast bones are modified into muscles which will hold the flight muscles the muscles which are used for flying flight muscles these breast bones will hold the flight muscles so that it will have the control over those muscles of flight which will make the wings to uh, move up and down okay what is the work of the breast bones breast bones will hold the muscles of flight and which will make the wings to Uh, move up and down understood so this is about the birds about the bones next we will go for the next animal that is fish so i think all that all i have understood about this okay uh, shall i tell you once again birds will fly walk or swim 
and world are light because of the bones which are lighted hollow and the bones in the uh, birds hind legs especially in the hind legs they are used for walking and perching and four limbs are converted into wings which will help them in flying and then the shoulder bones are very strong and the uh, breast bones are uh, modified to hold the muscles of flight wherein the wings will uh, they will make the wings to move up and down understood now we we'll go for the next animal that is we we'll go for the next animal uh, and see the movement of that animal it is about fish this is also very interesting some characters of fish so all must have made the paper boat in your house whenever it rains water stands there you make the paper boat and uh, you make it to move into the water whenever you just push the boat into the water have you seen the movement will you push it like this straight or will you push it sideways first before doing the move, uh, uh, making the boat to move in the water let me tell you the shape of the boat resembles the shape of the fish isn't it and both will move in the water the shape of the boat is exactly not exactly it is in the shape. it is like a, a fish so why is that it resembles the fish there and why we are making both of them to move in the water okay now we'll see about the movement when you push the it is having pointed end your fish boat so it is like this so what is the shape and your fish will be like this okay it just resembles the fish in the water so when you make the paper boat and when you make it to move it into the water you just push it you will push it the point to which is pointing front isn't it you will not push sideways why is that because of the shape shape which will make the boat to move easily in the water that is called as streamline and when you push the boat with the pointed end towards the front the uh, boat moves very easily but if you push push it sideways it will not what is the reason for that that we are going to study in this topic now so before studying that stream line i just wanted to tell about the resemblance between the fish and the boat now after that we we'll come to the stream line shape now before that we will study how is the what is the shape what is the what are the body parts of the fish in fish the head and tail are smaller than the portion in between head and tail are smaller than the portion in between the next one is tapering tapering is mean they are pointed the front part and the last part of the fish is also tapering so these all why i am telling this these all parts will make the fish to move easily in the water okay and the fish this shape of the fish tapering and so pointed these all will make so what is that we write it as tapering tapering ends of the fish and this tapering end is called as stream line why it is tapering why it is necessary that the fish should have the pointed ends understood this will make the fish to move in the water easily why it will make the fish to move in the water easily because it will cut the water it's not like cutting it will resist the friction the force with water it is moving the water will making it to move isn't it it will push the fish but if the shape of the fish is pointed it will cut the water it will make the water to move around itself and it will it can move into the water very easily that's why the shape of the boat or the fish is made pointed to avoid the friction from the water to avoid the force of the water moving towards it so if it is pointed what happens water if it is rushing towards it it will flow sideways and it can move easily understood same is the with the birds also birds how they fly even the they move like this in the v shape is because it has to cut the air it has to move air will be giving force it will not allow the uh, whatever the flying things are it will not aeroplanes and all why they are pointed so that they can cut through the air and they can move with the fly in the air otherwise if it is like this aeroplanes are like this what will happen air will rush towards this, uh, whatever things they are flying it will not allow the things to move forward understood but if the things are stream line they will, they can cut through the air or water and they can move easily movement will be easy so that's why fishes 
are streamlined in shape so that it is easy for them to move inside the water understood and next one skeleton of the fish skeleton of the fish is also we we'll go for the skeleton it is very they have strong muscles okay they have very strong muscles which will allow so why they are telling about strong muscles what is the importance of these muscles these muscles will make the front portion of the uh, fish to move one side one it makes the curve like this and the tail moves swings to the opposite so making it like a curve so i think yeah you can see the pictures in your textbook these strong muscles will make the fish to make a curve how how is the curve made it head moves one side and the swing and the tail moves swings to the opposite why it does like that and while doing this there is a jerk and that jerk will make the fish to move forward when this curve is uh, formed there and during this formation of the curve jerks are produced means just a push so that the animal should move forward and when doing like this when these curves are more series of curves are there jerks are more and which will make the fish to move inside see like this so we will say like this fish how it moves we will say like this so there is a curve like it will not move like this straight so fish will be moving so when it is fast we can't understand we will say fish like this so once the head like this tail that side again like this like this so it is making a curve which is producing jerks and these series series means many jerks will make the fish to move easily into the water and important strong muscles uh, they will make the curve and these curves will make the jerks and this series of jerks will make the fish to move forward they will make the uh, fish to move forward understood our uh, next one important part of the fish is fins we do not talk about the fins so fins are another important structures which are present on the fish so these also will help in the balancing the body those fins are very important structure which are present on the fish which will help them in balancing the body and following the direction okay what is the what is the function of the fins they will balance the fish so when it is moving isn't it nobody is holding so they will balance and then following the direction it will help in following the direction and have you seen the divers the divers the people who go and explore into the sea or ocean and have you seen they will be having the oxygen cylinders and have you seen their legs uh, they will be wearing flippers like fins so that the movement which is there which will help them to move into the water easily understand so water will have a lot of force inside so they will act as though like they will uh, see all the structures and of the animals which are there in water so fins so those flippers are like fins and they will use it for the easy movement into the water so they can get easily into the water their movement does not become difficult understood so these are something about the movements uh, these are some parts of the fish which will help the fish to move easily into the water so once uh, we get fish uh, what are the body parts the body parts are tapering and tapering ends and the uh, compared to the middle portion of the fish the two end parts are smaller and they are tapering and this tapering is called as streamline and this streamline is very much necessary for fish for swimming because it will allow the fish to cut into the water and make its movement easy in the water understood then about the skeleton the skeleton of the fish is having strong muscles and these strong muscles will make the fish to make a curve inside the water so that it have it will have it will make jerks and those jerks many jerks will make the fish to move easily into the water and the forward movements of these jerks so that the fish can move easily into the water and next about fins so what are these fins fins are the structures which are present on the uh, fish and they help in balancing the animal they help the 
will uh, help the fish in balancing and even following the directions. And about the divers, I have told the divers will have flippers. They will wear the flippers like fins so that it will be easy for them to dive into the water. Okay, children, now we have studied about the fish, we have studied about cockroach today. And one more animal is there, it is about snake. Okay. The last animal, I think, this is about the snake. So, how does the snake move? So, what is the movement of the snakes called as slithery? So, snakes slither. Okay, now we, we will say. Uh, some animals crawl, some animals creep, some animals swim, some animals fly, we say. So snakes, what is the movement of the snakes called as slithering? Understood? How does the snake move? Snakes are having the backbone. What snakes have? They have a very long backbone. So you might have seen some of the snakes which are very, very long, isn't it? Some are small, some are very long. Okay, they have a very long backbone. Oh, yes, yeah. saying about one snake. It is having a long backbone. And how are what are the other parts present in the snake? And they have thin muscles. They also have thin muscles. Though they are very far from each other, though they are very they are connected to each other, but they are very far from each other. But still they are connected to the ribs. They are connected to the skin. They are connected to the backbone. Okay. They are connected to all these skin and then ribs and then backbone. Next, snakes. How do the snakes move now? Now we have studied about the body parts. What are snakes? Sorry. Uh, what are the body parts of the snakes? Snakes have a long backbone and they have very thin muscles and they are uh, connected very far from each other. Though they are connected, they are very far from each other. They are connected to the skin, they are connected to the ribs and they are connected to the backbone. And when the snake is moving, it will make a curve. It will make a loop, sorry. Curve is in fish. Now, what does the snake make? It makes a loop. Like this. It makes a loop. Isn't it? When it is, since it is having very long body, it makes number of loops. So, why it is making loops? When it is making loops, same way, it also makes jerks. Understood? Why it is? For the movement. It makes, it moves forward. It attaches its body to the ground and it makes the loop so that each loop will make a jerk and each jerk will make the snake to move forward. So, you have seen so many loops when the snake is moving. Have you seen the jerks and loops there? So, these loops are making jerks and many, many loops, many, many jerks and that snakes are very fast in the movement and they do not move in the straight straight line. Have you seen snakes moving straight? No. They will be always moving with the loops like this. Like this. So, when these loops are formed, jerks are made. And when these jerks are there, many jerks, fast movement of the animal. Understood? And how these make, they, how do these uh, snakes make the loop? They press towards the ground. Once they press towards the ground, loops are made. And when strong, strongly when they press into the ground and the loops create jerks and these jerks will make the snakes to move farther, fast. Okay, so this is the fast movement in the snakes. So just once again, I will repeat all the, uh, this much uh, parts are there in the snakes and the movement of the snakes. So snakes have long backbones and they have very thin muscles and these muscles are attached far from each other. Though they are far, far from each other, they are connected to the backbone, they are connected to the ribs and they are connected to the skin. And these uh, movement of the snakes is they make in the sorry they curves are formed curves are formed and which are made into loops and these loops give a jerk to the body when against the ground when they press against the ground and when they are pressed against the ground it moves forward and series of jerks series of, and the movement is very fast understood so 
so this is about the snake understood children so this is about uh, the lesson what we have learnt in this lesson we have learnt about the your bones different types what are the parts of the present which will help in the movement of those animals we have studied about earthworm we have studied about snail we have studied about cockroach we have studied about uh, 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 birds then fish then snakes so these what how their body parts are modified how they, how they are suited for their environment on what surface they will move how it will move what are the uh, muscles there how they will help the muscle how the muscles will help the animals to move from one place to another so this is all about in this lesson and the last part what they have given in the textbook just if you see it is given about the ancient greek philosopher aristotle in this he has written a book of a book called diet of animals and he has asked himself the questions how do these animals move what is the why is the difference between these animals so many animals are there what are the difference in their movements why the difference in the movement what are the how are the body parts so fish when we consider now we have considered at least five animals here isn't it and so much of difference in their movement and even the medium in their which they move some move in water some fly and some move on the ground isn't it so they have asked in the last paragraph so in his book uh, diet of animals he has asked himself these questions why do different animals have the body parts that they do have and how do these body parts help animals to move the way they do so they are some are modifying themselves so they are using those and they are moving in those only those surfaces only he has asked questions to himself and what are the similarities some though there are so many differences but some similarities also will be there and what are the similarities and differences in their body parts between different animals how many body parts are needed for different animals uh, how many body parts are required for the movement some are not for movement some are for another work so how many body parts are used for moving from place to place why two legs for humans and why four legs for cows and buffaloes so many questions are there so many animals seem to be having even number of legs why why is the bending of legs different from our arms so here why our legs will bend why the movement of the legs and hands are different understood next uh, so many questions and perhaps we have looked for some answers so we have seen the structure of our body understood so legs are for walking so how so we are not using our legs for doing some other work we are using only for walking so the hands are used for doing activities some we are rotating some it is in different directions so these are some of the differences between the movements of one animal to another animal okay now this is all about the diet of animals and different animals also we have studied now activities some activities are there children so tomorrow once we will see all the activities from first and this is all about just a summary like whatever i have told you from the first so all the activities we will just uh, see now just see activity just take to the page 67 activity 1 can you see that activity 1 okay now what the boy is doing there why i am telling you the activity so that you will understand the concept clearly if you see those if you only just listen listen you have to see the activities also okay just follow those just see those activities which are done don't try it unless told okay now place the scale lengthwise on your arm so the boy has placed the scale below his hand in the center ask your friend to tie the scale to and your arm together now try to bend your elbow when the scale is tied to your hand and fully it is tied now can you move it like this can you bend your hand like this no so what is the important what is the uh, concept here joints understood if there was no joint here would you uh, can you uh, bend your hand like this so the importance of joint is given here understood so because of the joint you can fold your hand properly if there was no joint you, have, you should have walked like a, what is it robot like this no movement isn't it so this activity is telling you about the joints okay now next we'll go for the activity 2 what that activity 2 tells you about ball and socket joint so what this ball and socket i told you yesterday how this joint is made 
two bones are there so one is one rounded end of the bone gets fitted into the hollow cavity of another bone and so then there is free movement of this rounded here we have isn't it so that will be free movement in that socket what in that hollow cavity which will make the other bone to move easily and so just they have told you one they have made in a small uh, uh, this one demonstration or some uh, with a bowl and then a ball and then paper cylinder they have taken all these three and they have prepared the ball and socket uh, joint here okay now what they have told roll a paste strip of paper some, uh, what is that sheet you can roll it into a cylinder and then make a small hole in between and then an old rubber or a plastic ball you are fixing into that cylinder and you are taking a bowl and you are keeping it in that bowl and just see the movement how it is inside so same way our ball and socket joint is there and how the movement is there also we can understand just i will read listen roll a strip of paper into the cylinder and make a small hole in an old rubber or a plastic ball don't do it just listen to it and push the paper cylinder if you are doing also it should be done under the supervision of some of your elders and it is shown in the figure 8.2 we can stick to a cylinder on the ball put the ball in a small bowl and does the ball rotate see the movement of the ball in the in that bowl okay it is very freely inside so same way we have our ball and socket joint now we'll go for the activity 3 so here they are showing you about the hinge joint so what is that hinge joint say when you uh, take your uh, door and when you just take it take uh, pull your door same way this hinge joint is there so they have taken one uh, uh, raw, uh, cardboard uh, one long pipe like let us look at the kind of movement so this is a cylinder like sorry small cylinder and then they have made a hole and they have put a paper roll inside and they have tried to move it front and back it cannot it will not go at the side so this is your hinge so just i'll read listen make a cylinder with a cardboard or a thick chart paper as shown in the figure 8 point attach a small pencil okay pencil to the cylinder inside okay then by piercing into the cylinder and then what happens just try to move it okay make a hollow half cylinder from the cardboard so that the roll of the cylinder can fit inside it easily the hollow half cylinder with the rolled up cylinder sitting inside it allows the movement like a hinge of the door so it is shown the arrow marks is shown there inside it will move front and back so this is about the hinge uh, joint wherein you have where is the where the movement is only moving forward and backward okay so this tomorrow we will see the next activity that is activity 4 uh, we will continue with that so for today activity 1 2 3 is enough and uh, tomorrow we'll continue with the next activities okay children have a good day